Welcome back to the Talos Principle. Let's go see what's going on on floor four of the tower. Hmm. The key's up above. Sometimes it accesses the wrong databases, pulls random data. I don't know. I don't know how bad it is. It all seems to be stable, but I can't tell what kind of impact this is going to have on the process. And uh, I just don't have the strength to go over all of the code again. I, I just... I just... I just don't want it all to be for nothing. I spent all my time here. I didn't visit my parents. I didn't see my friends. I did nothing but work. And I'm so scared that it didn't mean anything. That I just wasted it all because I thought we could... <laughs> we could save the world. She worked on this project until she died. As did many of the other people working on this project too, I think. That's actually... that actually makes me think about something, or reminds me of something I've been thinking about lately. And that's that... I kind of made the assumption that everything here, this this entire system that I'm a part of, was perfectly designed, and everything was thought of, everything was considered. Well, I mean, of course it can't be actually perfectly designed, even if they had unlimited time to work on it. There would always be flaws. But more to the point. Maybe they didn't consider everything because I don't think they actually had a chance to finish their work. And that message there pretty much proves that. There are flaws in the system. And she didn't have time to go over the code again. They're just teasing the keys. They're right there. Right there on the other side of this wall. You bastard. idea. I think I might need to do what I just recently did. The, um, the kind of double stacking on your recording thing. Where you have your recording stand on top of a box, and then you get a box. And put it on top of the recording. I think I might have to do that. I think that's the only way I can actually get the height to go up there. So it's going to be two boxes high, plus my recording's jump, plus my own jump. That should be enough, I think. Alright, um, how do I do this? Can I get up here? I can, okay. Yeah, so... We do this. Oh, look, it's even marked for you. Box goes here.
And then we jump. <laughs> yep, just enough. Hmm. There's a computer, but this whole place is oddly fragmented. Look at all these twisting pathways. That's weird. I think there's something more. But let's just focus on the computer for now. Sacred numbers. And so the blessed messenger revealed unto me the bones of New Jerusalem, slumbering in the dust that was the body of Adam, awaiting the day of resurrection. And lo and behold, within the dust was concealed a holy fire. And the fire, something something, the sacred numbers of which the one you seek is. Door pass 158. And I perceived that with the holy fire and sacred knowledge of numbers and sigils, the rekindling. Hmm. Sacred knowledge of numbers and sigils. Sigils in particular are relevant to what I've been doing. Door pass 158. I'm assuming that's the password to the next level. I should write that down. Door pass 158. Athena 16. The fires burned here, but beyond the incense, she could smell the cold wind from the kingdom of Artemis, where... But I am not Hephaestus, you see, for though I wield his hammer and know the secrets of his forge, I am not lame, and neither am I a god. Who are you, then? They said. Remember... I don't know if anyone's ever going to read this, but if you do, if we succeeded, then I want you to know that Alexandra stayed until the last moment. I'm leaving. Too tired. Too broken. Desperate for a few moments of peace with my remaining loved ones. But she's still there, and she won't give up. And yes, there are thousands like her all over the world, giving everything they have because they believe in humanity. But she's the one that I know, as a real person, a colleague, a friend. I know that she likes peanut ice cream and hates strawberry, that her favorite band is Pink Floyd, that her favorite poet is Blake, that her favorite TV show is Futurama, something, something, studied at Cornell, that her dad's name was Carl, that her mom's name was... I don't know if I should be ashamed for leaving, but I know that I'm proud of her. She was the best of us. Remember her. So I think some of the easter eggs that I'm finding in this game are actually not only easter eggs put in by the game developers, the, the actual game developers, but they're also easter eggs that are supposed to be related to what the in-story game developers were actually interested in too. Because he says that her favorite band was Pink Floyd, and there was a Pink Floyd easter egg.
Okay, well, I have some translating to do, so I'll be right back. There we go. So all of this translated reads, But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? When I read that, I thought, that sounds kind of like poetry. And the Stitches mentioned that her favorite poet is Blake. So I just googled it, and indeed, this is actually a bit of poetry from William Blake. And the actual full passage here is this. God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? Alright, so let me see if I actually have the password to the next level. And I'm just going to check this auxiliary uh, stairway access control thing again. Ah, still says it's perpetually open. I just don't know where it is. Okay, let's go for number five. So, 158. Oh, sweet! It worked. So I believe what that means is that the final password to level 6 is probably the password that I f get from um, unlocking the final star room. Because the previous two star rooms have had one part of the password. Just one character. I could probably even brute force it. There's only ten possible characters for the last password. For the last part of the password. Hmm. But there shouldn't be any need to do that. Should be able to find all the stars. Right? Okay. Now, something's going on here. There's all that stuff back there. And yet all of it's blocked off. So... I believe there's a way to get back there. Probably using the trick that I just used with my recording. Um... Hmm. How'd I do this, though? Because if I pass under this, then... If I'm standing on top of my recording, I'm just going to be sheared off by the doorway. So if I don't do it that way, then how would I do it? I can't go through here. There's got to be a way. See, I was just able to reach the keys. I don't think I could actually jump up and over. Could I? Let's try it again. You know, I feel like I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna um, use a lot of time just testing a bunch of stuff. So I'm actually just gonna cut right here, and I'll come back when I find either something or absolutely nothing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I just figured out how to do this. Okay, so I can take my recording through this doorway, right? The issue is that I can't stand on top of him because then I would just get knocked down by the doorway. However, what I can do is have my recording go through here, go over here, and then get on top of him here. Yeah. Okay. Do I need the box? I'm not sure if I need the box, because what I'm gonna be trying to where I'm gonna be trying to get is right here. Yeah, I think I need the box. Okay. 
That's fine, just means it's gonna take a little bit longer. Gotta go here. Alright. So I'm not gonna be jumping up there, so I'm gonna be jumping up here. And that should do it. Oh crap. Gonna bounce me off. Hope that's not a problem. Yeah, I'm hoping that bounce doesn't knock me off. There we go. Might as well take this with me. Thank you, me. I love I. Now, secrets? Secrets? If there's no Easter eggs up here, I'm going to be very disappointed. I guess I should jump down there. Let's take a look around. There might actually be nothing here. Oh no! Well, that's sad. Alright, hold on. There we go. Okay, let's just jump down here. Secrets? There's actually no secrets here. Wow. I really felt like there would be. I read these, didn't I? Yeah. Alright, let's go to level 5 just for fun, even though I can't open it. Oh, I'm really close to that deadly black cloud in the sky. is an awful lot of pieces. Alright, so now it's time to head to, what, Hub C level... 4? Or is it 5? Going down the fast way, of course. Whee!
Oh, finished number four, so yeah, number five. Oh my god. Three stars, huh? Interesting. I think that's the first level with three stars. Many ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. Party on, dudes! From Lubomir Georgiev, or something like that. Subject, the land party at the end of the universe. Yo, I don't know if you folks noticed, but it's the end of the world. There's nothing we can do about it. So instead of sitting around crying, how about we have some fun before we croak? Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. It's land party time! Two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. There'll be noms, drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited. And bring your friends, too. Especially if they're hot. See you in 3000 BC. Lub lub. <laughs> lub lub. Philosophy of teeth. Hmm? I didn't know there was a philosophy of teeth. Last night, I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several incompetent dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean, the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and these waves drown out everything else about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. There's just pain and absolutely nothing else. It's like your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then? You go to the dentist, and assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which makes you go numb. Then they drill a hole in, in you, cut the nerve, snip snip, and it's over. Just like that. Like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve sending electrochemical signals into your brain and this unimaginable pain, which nearly blotted out your very consciousness, can be stopped by just a little cut. We should call this the Toothos Principle, but that's incredibly stupid. <laughs> Progress Report 32 From Nadia Sarapai We've got to that we've gotten to that irritating point where all the major stuff is in place, and all we have to deal with are a million little things. The main modules are still functioning and interacting with each other correctly. The process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work. But it's still crude as hell. Some of it's just surface stuff, like the random usernames. Some of it's more worrying. Various bugs, the fact we haven't run more extensive tests. We've got a lot of polishing to do. With a team down to half the original size, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. P.S. Alexandra, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. Yeah, it sounds like some stuff just never got finished. I wonder what they decided to prioritize. And I wonder if some of the... Some of the quirks of the system... Or some of the quirks of Elohim... May be due to having to do a kind of extreme measures right at the end. Without ever actually testing any of them. Just because they didn't have time. When the scale of it all overwhelms me... This is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. 
Sure, we are minuscule momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. I'm just going to rest here for a while. I need a moment of peace. Destiny can wait. Not a bad place to rest, friend. You have to jump across a series of pillars to get the paint. Ooh. Another computer. Hello? Hello! Hello! Transcendence. Which, by the way, is the name of a horrible movie with Johnny Depp. God, it was so bad. Seriously, don't watch that movie. It's one of the worst I ever saw. I actually saw it in theaters. I can't believe I saw it in theaters. Ugh. Anyway. Reader responses to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective material reality. I'm also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. And yet, I believe. I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion, to me, is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the Earth is 6,000 years old, or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a rejection of reason, but its application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science, and is not opposed to it. Dr. Omar Garib, Institute for Applied Nomadics. I respectfully disagree. Although I appreciate your rather well reasoned and uh, polite words. Matter. True, there are certain idealist books, not of a clerical character, but philosophical ones, wherein you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9pm train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the tail of the departing train, 
and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish the space, to overcome it, to economize time, to prolong human life, to register past time, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject matter to subject matter to man. Matter which constitutes the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Build a universe. In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe, that doesn't fall apart two days later. Philip K. Dick discusses the two themes that are most central to his work. What is reality? And what is an authentic human being? His speculations and experiences will seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work. Yet, despite what may seem like far-fetched ideas, somehow the world of the Bible is a literally real but veiled landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to, to us by revelation. Or the notion that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD, Dick actually delivers one of the simplest, most elegant, and most useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before. For example, Stratton of Strategeria's Talos Principle. But it's a particularly interesting to see it's particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. That is indeed a pretty good definition. I've heard it many times before. I like this rock. This rock is my friend. This rock is trying to help me get out of this place. Unfortunately, it's not quite tall enough. I appreciate your efforts, though, rock friend. Rock on. I keep trying to imagine that all of this is designed for some purpose. Not just the challenges, but Elohim, the terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before our eyes, it's behind them. Indeed. That is very true. Alright, let's do a puzzle before I end the episode. So, which one should I go with? Um, this one. Why not? Time crawls. can be supplied through that window. Potentially. Alright, so I think I see the piece in there. So I need to get all these open and I need to supply blue power to there. Hmm. And I have 
functionally four things with which to do that. If you consider what my recording can do. Okay, so I think I need two connectors, right? To make it around the bend? Yeah, I do. So my recording is going to have to take the connector in with it. So I've got to use the box to hold it down. So... Isn't that block? Isn't that box going to block the blue power, though? Oh, no, it's fine. Alright, so we take the box. Put it here. Do that, and then go stand on this. I think. Just gonna wait until 30 seconds. Give myself plenty of me time. Alright, that box is back. Now we need to take this. That was perfect, except it just can't quite connect. Um... Okay, I think I can put it in a position where it actually can hit both. It's a really narrow margin, though. But I can do it. Shit. Thankfully, there's pretty much no setup time for this puzzle. Um, yeah. So take this. Put it here. Take this. You put it as far over as possible. I feel like it can go over more. Hmm, maybe. That might do it. I'm not sure. Yes, 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 yes! It is gonna reconnect, right, when it goes back down? Please do. No, it doesn't! Shit! Ah! Please tell me you're done with it. Are you done with it? Please be done with it. Okay, we're good. Ah! Sweet! Where does this go? Hello. Oh, I thought it went up to a, onto a walkway. Damn. I think that's another puzzle room over there. Well, that was a surprisingly quick puzzle. And I've got to be on the lookout for stars because there's an awful lot of stars here. Also, I can walk through that sign. 
Because why not? And this one too. Anyway, I think that's a good note to end on. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.